Can you do me a little favor, please don't make a personal commitment. Introduction He made a big mistake when he was reborn. A post.95 S actually returned to 1985 and became a dropout youth in Huxiang. Living in a poor and unfamiliar era, he lived happily in the countryside of the lake area. What makes him most happy is that sometimes he helps a little casually, such as sponsoring a few yuan of tuition fees, teaching a few exercises, and even only encouraging or. Chapter 1, Rebirth of Mistakes You are listening at NovelFull.audio Hoo 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 hoo, the night wind was strong, and the brick and tile structure of the township hospital was shaking. The night breeze is also very cold, and the branches are all wrapped in ice. Many branches that have been frozen out of resilience are crushed by thick ice and smashed to the ground. When the strong wind occasionally stops, the sound of them hitting the ground spreads far and wide, making the wilderness appear extremely quiet and spacious, and also making people feel very eerie. On this night, stray wild dogs dare not bark. When they are too scared, they only dare to press their heads on the ground and whimper a few times. He lay calmly on the hospital bed, with no fear in his eyes. With the dim yellow light emitted by the incandescent lamp hanging in the middle of the roof, he quietly looked at the iron frame of the iron-framed glass window, at the piece of paper stuck to the edge of the iron frame, and watched it tremble in the cold wind passing through the cracks of the iron frame staring at the paper for a long time, until his eyes were tired, he moved his gaze away and quietly turned his head, silently surveying the ward. The ward is very old, and the lime wall has turned yellow. Several places have fallen off, revealing a reddish earth brick wall. The air is filled with a pungent smell of disinfectant, the residual sour smell after the patient vomited, and the rotten smell of the patient's shoes and socks the ward is very crowded, with eight beds arranged from the door to the window. Eight patients, five men and three women, are lying on the beds. From far to near, his gaze finally fell on the side face of the girl across the bed. The girl looked very thin, about thirteen or fourteen years old, with a sickly and pale face full of haggard and fatigue. Even if she fell asleep, she would occasionally frown and moan in discomfort, but her voice was very weak, like a kitten. He was well aware that the girl next to him was hospitalized for appendicitis surgery, while he himself was hospitalized for drowning. What he is not sure about is whether he is Xie Huajiu, who was hospitalized due to drowning, or Han Zhangpeng, who died in a car accident. From yesterday until now, he has been confused, not knowing whether he is living in real life or in dreams. Yesterday afternoon, Han Zhangpeng finally concluded his technical negotiations with a special enterprise located deep in the mountainous area. Due to his eagerness to return to the company to arrange production orders, as the CEO of the sensor company, he politely declined the other party's offer to let them have a meal. He got into the small car driven by the full dot time driver Xie Huajiu and braved heavy rain all the way back. As they approached the provincial road from the deep mountains, he and the driver were stunned by the terrifying scene ahead. Countless stones suddenly rolled down the roadside slope, and a school bus rushed out of the road due to hasty avoidance, overturning in the roadside drainage ditch. Stones of different sizes kept rolling down the mountain, constantly smashing towards the school bus. The school bus constantly heard children crying in fear and agony driver Xie Huajiu quickly glanced at Han Zhangpeng from the rearview mirror and resolutely stepped on the accelerator, the car rushed forward with a loud bang and came to a dead stop on the side facing the school bus. The falling stones hit their small car, shattering the glass, flattening the roof, and shattering their heads when he woke up, he was surprised to find himself lying in this simple, old, and crowded ward. What surprised him even more was that he found himself reborn. What was even more surprising was that he discovered a serious mistake in his rebirth. He was born in 1995, but he returned to 1985 and even possessed the body of Xie Huajiu when he was young, as well as his memories. Lying in the hospital bed, thinking of his elderly parents and those mischievous and lovely children, his heart was twisted like a knife. It was only when he thought about the child in the car who was rescued that his mood slightly relaxed. 
He didn't know whether to mourn death or be fortunate enough to be reborn, so he had no choice but to force himself to stare at the trembling pieces of paper at the edge of the iron-framed window to distract his attention. When the wind outside blows fiercely, it shakes at a high frequency and emits a faint scream, creating a small phantom at the tip of the paper. When the wind outside begins to slow down, its shaking becomes gentle. Sometimes it seems tired from shaking, and occasionally it stops for a second or two before shaking again but he still thought of his full dot time driver from time to time. Even me, a scumbag, has received a big gift package for rebirth. Xie Huajiu is the true hero who sacrificed himself to save the child. He should be luckier than me, right? Could it be that God deliberately played tricks on us to cross rebirth? He was reborn as me, I was reborn as him. Let me bear the poverty and suffering he suffered when he was young. Unconsciously, the sky outside the window slowly brightened, and the strong wind that had been blowing all night also stopped. From afar, the sound of roosters chirping could be heard from time to time. The patients in the ward woke up one after another, some coughing, some groaning, some drinking water, and some wearing shoes to go to the bathroom outside. Xie Huajiu, since his body belongs to Xie Huajiu, let's call him Xie Huajiu, felt thirsty, turned his head and looked up at the bedside table on his left. Seeing that the can glass bottle used for drinking water on the bedside table was empty, I stopped thinking about drinking water. I was about to close my eyes and take a nap when I saw the girl next to me open her eyes. Their eyes met in the air. The girl, like a frightened mouse, flashed away in fear and quickly closed her long, dense eyelids. Watching her long eyelashes tremble from time to time, he knew she was timid and shy, so he pressed his head against the pillow and turned towards the window, deliberately causing his head to rub against the pillow and make some noise. He made these noises just to remind her. I didn't look at you anymore, you open your eyes. He believed that the reborn must have the consciousness of the reborn. Since they were fortunate enough to be reborn, in order to repay the heavens, they should be kind to those around them. At this moment, the door of the ward was pushed open from outside to inside. Xie Huajiu instinctively turned his head and looked at the door of the sick room, only to see a middle dot aged woman tiptoeing in. She held a blue cloth bag in her left hand and a little girl around five years old, tightly wrapped in cotton clothes and pants in her right hand. As soon as she entered the door, the middle dot aged woman's gaze eagerly swept toward Xie Huajiu. Seeing him, a relaxed smile welled up on her face. She quickened her pace slightly, but before she could get closer, she lowered her voice and urgently asked Xie Huajiu with concern, Huajiu, are you doing better? The little girl led by her didn't have much scruples. When she saw Xie Huajiu looking at her, she happily shouted, Big brother. Mom and I have come to see you. We brought you a lot of delicious food to eat. There are fried eggs and fried cured meat. They are so delicious, very, very delicious, I haven't even eaten them. As she spoke, she broke free from her mother's hand and ran towards the bedside like a rolling cotton ball. A small face full of innocent laughter, the ponytail tied with rubber bands at the back of her head swayed and swayed as she ran. Because of her arrival, the previously lifeless ward suddenly became lively. Shu. Xiaoyan, please keep your voice down. The middle dot aged woman was very anxious and hurriedly warned her daughter, humbly greeting the patient. Hello, big brother. Sister-in-law, sorry to bother you, sorry, sorry. Chen's little girl, have you woken up? Are you feeling better? The girl lying next to Xie Huajiu smiled at the middle dot aged woman who came in, and weakly called out, Auntie, good morning. I'm feeling better now. The woman who slept in the third bed also smiled generously and said, Sister, there's nothing wrong. We've all slept enough. Hearing her laughter, my illness has improved a lot. Perhaps they sympathized with the same illness, or perhaps the little girl was lively and lovely. Not a single patient expressed dissatisfaction with the girl's loud noise, and they all smiled at her. Xie Huajiu was only stunned for a second before immediately recognizing the person who came. 
He looked at the little girl who looked like a cotton ball and smiled, asking, Little sister, why did you come too? Is it cold outside? Well, it's cold, it's so cold. After answering, she twisted her body in embarrassment, pinching her fingers together and whispered, Big brother, you can't eat all the cured meat and eggs. Mom said, Give me what you can't finish. Do you know? Yummy. Xie Huaju laughed and cursed, Little sister, what do you love the most? Cured meat or eggs? The chicken. After hesitating for a moment, she felt a bit shy. Actually. I actually enjoy eating them all. Dot. Xie Huaju looked at her silently, are these all for you? Being stared at by her older brother, she smiled awkwardly and glanced at the blue cloth bag containing the food. She leaned back on the edge of the bed and looked at the ceiling, changing the topic and saying, Big brother, hurry up and eat. Uncle, uncle, and Uncle Chun will all come later. There will be many, many people coming. Looking at the little sister of the ghost spirit, Xie Huaju smiled and casually asked, Will there really be many, many people coming? Well, there you go. Grandpa, uncle, grandpa will all come, and there will be many, many people coming too. She said excitedly, Grandpa and they will avenge you. Let's go fight those bad guys together and make them cry. Cry to death, those bad guys. Ha <laughs> ha. Chapter 2, Shameless Uncle. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Xie Huaju's heart twitched as he looked at the middle dot aged woman who was opening her cloth bag and taking out dishes. He asked. Are we going to fight at the Yuan family today? He instinctively wanted to call out, Mom, but he stopped talking. The memories from his past life, Han Zhanpeng, made it difficult for him to shout out, and he felt a bit estranged from the middle dot aged woman in front of him. Xie's mother Lu Bing didn't notice these things. She shook her head, sighed, and said melancholically, It's your uncle. Your uncle said we should discuss today. After discussing, we can call back tomorrow. He said that when your father comes back, he will take the lead and settle accounts with the Yuan family together. Will it be illegal for so many people to fight? He has a strong legal concept from his past life, and the memories of Xie Huaju in this life also tell him who the Yuan family is. He couldn't help but say, the Yuan family is not a soft persimmon. Xie's mother looked melancholic and said, Hey, as long as you don't kill anyone, it should be okay. You wipe your face first. I'll go get you some hot water. Xie Huaju mechanically took the wet towel from her bag and wiped his face absentmindedly. He didn't watch Xie's mother leave with a hot water bottle, nor did he talk to the younger sister. Instead, he tried to recall his past life with Xie Huaju and whether he and Xie Huaju had discussed the fight between the Xie and Yuan families. In his past life, Han Zhanpeng, as the boss, had a good conversation with Xie Huaju, a cheerful and full dot time veteran driver. Sometimes when sitting in a car for a long time and getting tired, the two of them casually chat about things in the car, such as current events, sports, and sometimes also talk about things happening around them, or talk about certain things in their respective homes. Quickly, Xie Huaju remembered that in his previous life, Xie Huaju had talked to him about the armed conflict between the Xie Yuan family, and had talked more than once. The reason is simple. Not only was this mechanical fight caused by Xie Huaju almost drowning. And this fight has turned the Xie family from prosperity to decline. The Xie family has also changed from being respected by others to being despised by neighbors. According to Xie Huaju in his previous life, from his grandfather to Xie Huaju for three generations, the Xie family had many brothers, each of whom was tall and powerful. In addition, his grandfather had long served as a brigade cadre, and even though he has now stepped down, the Xie family has a good reputation among the villagers. The initiator of this mechanical fight is called Xie Jianjun, who is Xie Huaju's uncle. He has been nurtured by his parents and siblings since childhood. Although everyone is very poor in this era, his family never lacks food and clothing. He does nothing but play every day. 
Over time, he developed a tendency to be lazy and lazy, and to be picky about trivial matters. As he grew up, he also became addicted to gambling. Although the Xie family has a reputation, they still put in a lot of effort to find a girl to marry Xie Jianjun, a scoundrel, and start a family. They had hoped that after Xie Jianjun got married, he could restrain himself under the constraints of his wife and become a husband and father like ordinary men. However, to their surprise, he not only failed to improve, but also developed a habit of constantly abusing his wife on the basis of laziness and gambling. His wife Yuan Xiu is often beaten by him for no reason. Just the day before yesterday, Xie Jianjun lost over 100 yuan gambling at the gambling table and even asked his wife if he wanted to eat or drink when he got home. Yuan Xiu was so angry when she learned that he had lost so much money. Not only did she not cook for him, but she also scolded him angrily. You should know that 100 yuan is not a small amount now, not to mention in poor rural areas, it is also a huge sum of money in the city. Xie Jianjun became angry with embarrassment and hit Yuan Xiu hard, causing her to lay in bed with blood all over her face. After learning the news, her father and brother rushed over on foot for dozens of miles the next morning. They caught Xie Jianjun and beat him hard. They also punched Grandpa Xie Huajiu who came to stop them and pushed him to the ground. On the way home carrying Yuan Xiu, the Yuan family met Xie Huajiu, who was playing with his little sister. Yuan Xiu's brother punched the unsuspecting Xie Huajiu hard in the head. After fainting Xie Huajiu, he was still angry and kicked him into the cold river water. If it weren't for Xie Xiaoyan crying loudly and inviting neighbors to come down the river to save him, Xie Huajiu would probably have drowned like this. Xie Huajiu was innocently beaten and almost drowned, leading to a sudden escalation of the conflict between the Yuan and Xie families. On the 18th of the 12th lunar month, the two families each called for a fierce fight, resulting in multiple injuries, including Xie Dingxin, the father of Xie Huajiu who had just returned home from work at the reed field. He not only had one rib broken, but also was detained by the police for leading a fight. This armed conflict led to a complete breakdown of the relationship between the Xie and Yuan families. Yuan Xiu was expelled from the Xie family, and the Xie and Yuan families broke off their engagement and communication. Xie Jianjun also became an unregulated bachelor, gambling with people all day and night. With Yuan Xiu in charge, Xie Jianjun has a limit to gambling, at least not daring to mortgage his house. Moreover, even if he dares to mortgage the house, others dare not accept it. After all, changing the owner of a house is not something that Xie Jianjun can do alone. He also needs his wife's consent. After Yuan Xiu was driven away, Xie Jianjun became the sole owner of this house. Not only did he dare to mortgage the house as gambling capital, but others also dared to accept it. In less than a month, Xie Jianjun lost his house, owed a huge gambling debt of several hundred yuan, and then fled. He escaped, and Xie Huajiu's father was only released. Xie Huajiu's uncle was also warned by the police, so that the Xie family lost their backbone and lacked deterrence in front of gamblers and creditors. Creditors are reckless and constantly come to ask for money. They also move furniture, catch and kill chickens and ducks, and dismantle the purlins on the roof grandma, who has always been respected by her neighbors and relatives, became angry and died in bed for less than a year. Grandpa also passed away soon with resentment. Fortunately, the old couple left early, otherwise they would have suffered even greater humiliation. Xie Jianjun wandered around and became a thug despised by everyone in the county. At first, he only dared to steal small things, but later his courage grew stronger and he eventually developed into armed robbery and forced humiliation of women. He was caught with a lot of sins and soon was sentenced by the court. A just bullet took his life and ended his shameless life. Xie Huajiu, who lived in his past life, has always been haunted by this fight. When it comes to family matters, he often mentions it to Han Zhangpeng. The reborn Xie Huajiu knew that he had to stop the fight, otherwise he, his family, and even the entire Xie family would live very hard. After a moment of contemplation, 
Xie Huajiu asked the little sister, Little sister, can you help big brother? Upon hearing that his brother wanted to help him, Xie Xiaoyan was very excited. With her big watery eyes open, she excitedly asked, Big brother, what do you want me to do? Yes. Yes. I can definitely do it well. Xie Huajiu said, Wait for grandpa and uncle to come over, you help me lie together. Ah, do you want me to lie? The little girl was shocked and looked at Xie Huajiu in confusion. She said in fear, I can't lie. Mom told me, a child lying will have sores on their tongue. Big brother, I will be in pain. Not only was the little girl surprised, but even the girl lying across the bed opened her eyes wide in surprise and looked at Xie Huajiu strangely but not fully. He said, tongue sores are something adults deceive children. Then, he looked at the little girl and asked, Little sister, big brother, I asked you, did you tell a lie? The little girl proudly said loudly, No. Never. I never lie. To emphasize her silence, she even shook her head like a tambourine, tossed her ponytail back and forth, and proudly glanced at the neighboring bed girl several times. Xie Huajiu sneered and said, Humph, last year, one day my mom asked if you wet the bed, and you said no. But when my mom opened the blanket and saw that it was so wet, it was so big. Did my mom want to hit you, or did I advise my mom not to hit you? Don't you remember? Dot, no, no. Just no. The little girl panicked, her face full of shame. She pinched her fingers together and looked at the lying girl with embarrassment, her voice like a mosquito and fly. That was when I was a child. When children used to wet the bed, they were not shy. The day before yesterday, my grandmother asked if you were a foodie, and you said you were not. Hee hee, you can tell yourself, are you a foodie? I, I. I'm not, I'm just a little delicious. Also, mom asked you the day before yesterday whether you were good or not, and you said you were good. But now you're saying it yourself, are you good or not? I, I'm good. I, I'm half good. Are you still half good? Look at you, you have mud all over your body and dirty face. But look at this sister, she's so beautiful. She didn't even say she's good, but you actually said you're half good. Did you lie? But I'm also pretty. When she said this, she looked aggrieved and a little flustered. Chapter 3, Threatening Little Cute Girl You are listening at NovelFull.audio Xie Huajiu was amused by the simple and lovely little girl. But he quickly stopped laughing and said seriously, Little sister, I tell you, if you lie casually, it's not good and you should be scolded by your mother. But if lying is for the good of everyone and to make your parents happy, sometimes we can still tell some lies. Can I lie for the sake of my parents' good? The little girl didn't believe in this cause and effect, and was even more worried about the consequences of lying. She stared at him and asked, Big brother, if I told a lie, will my tongue develop sores? Of course not. As long as it's for the good of parents, telling a little lie will definitely be fine. Xie Huajiu looked serious and deceived, dragging the girl next to her into the water. Don't believe it, you can ask this beautiful little sister. The little girl looked at the girl lying in the hospital bed with embarrassment, but was a bit hesitant to ask this unfamiliar sister. The girl next to her gave Xie Huajiu a white glance, unsure of what to say for a moment, but just smiled and looked at her little sister. Xie Huajiu fooled again and said, Little sister, if you lie to them as I said, I'll give you all the preserved meat and eggs in this bowl. The little girl suddenly lifted her head and her eyes lit up. Really? Big brother, did you wet the bed? Okay, I'll tell mom later that you didn't wet the bed. Dot. Xie Huajiu couldn't help but laugh and cry. He glared at the little girl and pulled his face, saying, It's not about wetting the bed. Later, I'll tell my grandfather and his team that I wasn't beaten yesterday and rolled into the river myself. You follow me and say, You saw me kick a stone while walking, fall down, and roll into the river with a rumbling sound. 
The little girl looked at him strangely and said seriously, but I saw Uncle Yuan hit your head before you fell. He even kicked you. Xie Huajiu first showed his authority by saying, Do you listen to Big Brother? If you don't listen, I'll eat all the cured meat and eggs. I won't leave any. After that, he reasoned, Do you know that lying for me is really for the good of my dad, for the good of my mom? Little sister, don't you want my dad and mom to be happy? Looking at the older brother and then at the sister next door, the younger sister was very conflicted and said. Really? Really? Of course it's true. And, if you listen to me, I still have sugar for you to eat. He said, propping himself up, reaching out to open the drawer, taking out a paper-wrapped candy from inside, lifting it and shaking it. Say, do you want to eat candy? I want to. The little girl was surprised, her surprised gaze fixed on the swaying candy, and the saliva flowing from her mouth hung down like silver thread. However, she didn't notice it herself, but said seriously, Big brother, I am willing. Willing to lie. Candy's combat power is too strong, it makes the little girl surrender in one go. This is my good little sister. Come on, here you are. I slapped the paper candy in my little sister's hand again. Seeing her happy expression, I couldn't help but think of my daughter from a previous life. My heart couldn't help but ache, and I said, eat quickly. Big brother will give you another one. As he spoke, his hand reached out to the drawer of the bedside table again. The little girl was so happy that she didn't even have time to peel the sugar paper, so she stuffed the sugar into her mouth and reached out her empty little palm. These. At this moment, the girl on the opposite hospital bed whispered, These candies are mine. Xie Huajiu immediately said to the younger sister, Yes. These candies are all from the younger sister. After finishing them, you should thank Miss Well. The girl on the hospital bed looked at him speechlessly, then at the little girl and smiled, but with a slightly forced smile. The little girl couldn't help but be stunned and said, Isn't this candy? Not yours, big brother. Mom. Mom said she can't eat other people's food. She'll beat me. She'll beat me. Here. 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 Really. Here. Although she looked very reluctant, she still gently put the sugar she had just received back into Xie Huajiu's hand. The girl on the hospital bed quickly smiled and said, Let's eat. Little sister, it's okay. This is what I gave you to eat. Xie Huajiu also handed the candy to the little sister and said, Quickly say thank you, Mississippi say that the little sister is really good, and wish her a speedy recovery and recovery. The little girl hesitated in her heart for several seconds before taking back her hand that was holding the candy. She took the candy from her mouth with her left hand and said to the little girl on the hospital bed, Thank you, sister. Wishing you all the best. Sister, you won't be sick tomorrow. Thank you, little sister. The girl on the hospital bed smiled and said softly. Xie Huajiu picked up the cotton jacket from the blanket and was about to sit up and rinse his mouth to eat, while saying to the little girl, Little girl, is the sugar delicious? Is it delicious? Okay. Can you tell me how I fell into the river yesterday? The other patients looked at them curiously and inexplicably, not understanding why Xie Huajiu was doing this. As the little girl put the candy into her pocket, she pondered and said, you kicked the stone while walking and rolled off, Uncle Yuan. Uncle Yuan didn't hit you in the head. Wrong. Xie Huajiu said seriously, you should say this. When I was running around by the river, I kicked a stone and rolled into the river. Don't say anything about Uncle Yuan, just say you saw me roll into the river. Did you hear me? Oh. I know. I know. I won't talk about Uncle Yuan. Smart. Just say you saw me running around on the shore and rolled into the river. Say it again. I saw you running around, running very fast, running and running, and you ran into the river. Great. If someone asks you why you scolded Uncle Yuan yesterday, 
you say he's ugly and you don't like him. Yes, you say he's a spy and a villain. After finally finishing his confession, Xie Huaju didn't have much confidence in his younger sister's ability to lie. Moreover, he was not sure how much these lies had an impact on preventing the fight. Angry adults may not necessarily seek the opinions of their two children. Lying can only be said to be a preparation for chatting, but if he wants to truly stop the upcoming armed conflict, he will have to think of another way. He reached out and took the saliva-soaked paper candy from the little girl's hand. Under the girl's watchful gaze, he removed the packaging paper from the candy, peeled off the dark orange candy, and then stuffed it back into her hastily opened little mouth. Eat it quickly. There was no need for him to remind her. The little girl, who had become happy again, quickly started chewing and turned her head to look at the door with caution. Her little hand also covered her mouth, and she had already put another piece of paper candy into her pocket. When Sia's mother returned with a hot water bottle, the little girl had already swallowed the sugar in her mouth, her face full of satisfaction and happiness. Xie Huaju took the water handed over by Xie's mother and rinsed his mouth. He wiped his face again with a damp towel that had been reheated. He sat up, leaned his back against the bedside, picked up his chopsticks, and started eating. This body stayed up all night, and he was already hungry. Two home-cooked dishes, the style of which was not very attractive, but when eaten in his mouth, Xie Huaju felt very delicious, even more delicious than the big meal he had eaten in a hotel in his previous life. He understood that the reason why these dishes looked and tasted very different was because his body was influenced by the memories of Han Zhangpeng in his past life. As a wealthy businessman, he was accustomed to various exquisite and expensive dishes at banquets, and the two rural dishes in front of him naturally did not catch his eye. But this body belongs to Xie Huaju again. He was used to the bitter days and found it difficult to eat meat. Now that he tasted the taste of cured meat and eggs, his olfactory organs were all excited and naturally felt that they were incredibly delicious. Although the food was delicious, he deliberately chewed it slowly and occasionally stuffed some dishes into the little girl's mouth. The little girl was very excited. Seeing that her mother didn't scold her, she opened her mouth and quickly closed her mouth, then lowered her head and swallowed quickly. Because I ate too fast, the food got into my trachea and I coughed several times in discomfort, tears streaming down my face. Seeing her disheveled appearance, Xie's mother couldn't help but laugh and cry. She scolded and lightly patted her back, saying, You're reincarnating like a ghost. You're eating so quickly. You even eat your brother's sick food. Humph, do you still have a craving? Be careful not to choke you to death. Looking at the little girl in front of him with a greedy expression, Xie Huaju couldn't help but feel heartbroken as he remembered the look of disgust on his children's faces when they ate in their past lives. He suppressed his appetite and stuffed a fried egg into her mouth. Although the mother never stopped her, the little girl sensible walked to the end of the bed after eating a few slices of meat and fried eggs, no longer sharing food with the big brother. At most, she secretly glanced at her and then turned her head to look in the other direction. Out of sight, she became less greedy. The fragrance of the vegetable wafted into her nose, but her saliva still flowed out uncontrollably, causing her to constantly wipe the corners of her mouth with her sleeves. Chapter 4, She's So Awesome You are listening at NovelFull.audio When her gaze met the gaze of her older brother and sister, the younger sister felt very embarrassed and ashamed of her own greed. At this moment, relatives of other patients also brought food one after another. Patients may be assisted to use the restroom, assisted in wiping their faces and hands, or simply washed some people ask patients about their condition and physical feelings, some talk about feeding pigs or chickens and ducks at home, some talk about interesting stories about their neighbors, and some talk about their experiences on the way to the hospital. Two doctors have also come to check the bed. They may inquire about the patient's condition, supervise their medication, or remind their family members to pay. The mother of the girl surnamed Chen from the neighboring bed also arrived. As soon as she entered the door, she humbly greeted the people around her, saying, Hello, doctor. 
Hello big brother. Sister-in-law, are you feeling better? Standing between two hospital beds, the two mothers politely greeted each other and exchanged greetings about each other's child's condition. Chen's mother is about the same age as Xie's mother, and their expressions are equally haggard. However, the Chen family is clearly poorer than the Xie family. Although the clothes on Chen's mother's body are clean and without patches, years of washing have made them lose the original color of the fabric. The food she brought was also extremely simple, with only a little pickled vegetables and some stir-fried cabbage on top of a bowl of rice. Seeing these, Xie Huajiu couldn't help but feel ashamed of her behavior. Dare you, those cheap paper-wrapped candies are her only tonic after surgery. Chen's mother slowly fed the girl with a ceramic spoon, whispering while feeding the food. The girl's surname Chen can eat less food after the surgery, but she cannot sit up temporarily and can only rely on others for feeding. Faced with her mother's constant nagging, the girl's surname Chen remained silent and responded with brief tone words such as, hmm. At first, Xie Huaju didn't pay attention to what they said, but after listening a few words by chance, he couldn't help but be stunned. Chen's mother spoke in a helpless and sorrowful tone. Your cousin came back from work out of town last night. He said he couldn't find your father. My family already owes him 60 yuan, and this time he lent me 10 yuan. You see, it's not mom. If I borrow money to pay your tuition fees, then your younger sibling's tuition fees for next semester won't be available for borrowing. After all, you still attended a high school, but your younger siblings only attended junior high school. As a mother, I can't just let you read and let them stop studying, can I? They're too young, what can they do when they come home? They can only stay at home and play. Chen's mother hesitated for a moment and then said, I've heard that girls understand early on. When they were young, they were good at studying, but when they grew up, they couldn't. Boys understand later. When they understand, those who used to be poor at reading will quickly improve and catch up with girls. Although your grades are good now, they may not necessarily be able to get into college. You see, do you understand what mom means? Seeing her daughter shed tears, Chen's mother felt guilty and insecure. Don't cry, crying is not good for your health. It's all because mom has no ability. If mom has the ability, why wouldn't she send you to school? You see, your father hasn't heard from me for over two years, and I can't hold on anymore. You need to help me. Hey, if your father comes home, it would be great. Bodhisattva blesses him not to have any trouble. Chen Yusi looked at her mother helplessly and said softly, Mom, I can stop studying. But I. I promised the teacher that I would pay off the tuition fees owed for this semester before the holiday. This was advanced by the teacher with her own money. Chen's mother sighed with shame and said, Hey, when the pigs are sold in the market next spring, I'll pay back the money I owe your teacher. You see, my mother really can't borrow money. Others say my family is a bottomless pit and borrowing money is impossible to repay. They also say that your father may have died outside. I owe Dr. Zhang a lot of money for medicine during my August illness. You see. Her surname is Chen. Her name is Chen Yusi. A world.class scientist in the aerospace field. Xie Huaju was stunned, as if he had been hit by a huge thunderbolt, and immediately remembered something related to Chen Yusi in front of him. Once he went out by car and encountered traffic jam on the highway. He and driver Xie Huaju were sitting in the car, watching the live broadcast of the launch of the Mars probe on national television through the onboard computer. After the successful launch, TV reporters interviewed several scientists who had made outstanding contributions to the aerospace industry, including a middle-aged woman. The text on the screen shows that this middle-aged woman is the chief scientist of the National Mars Exploration Program. Seeing her, driver Xie Huajiu blurted out, You see. She. Why is she so capable? At that time, Han Zhangpeng was even more incredulous than him. 
When he heard his full dot time driver affectionately refer to the female scientist on TV, he couldn't help but ask, Lao Xie, are you familiar with her? Why haven't I heard you mention it? She's a world-class scientist. And you haven't even finished middle school. At that time, Xie Huaju did not answer him, but his face showed an excited and regretful expression, and he hesitated to speak multiple times. Under Han Zhangpeng's questioning, Xie Huaju finally revealed a past that made him most proud and also saddened him the most. According to Xie Huaju at the time, he met Chen Yusi at the township hospital where their hometown was located. One was hospitalized due to drowning, and the other was hospitalized due to appendicitis surgery. The two beds are adjacent, separated by a corridor less than one meter wide. But his acquaintance with Chen Yusi was not because the hospital bed was very close, but because their Xie family made Chen Yusi embarrassed in public. On the morning of the second day of hospitalization, Xie Huaju's elders and a large group of relatives and friends crowded into the hospital room, sitting around Xie Huaju's bed, fiercely discussing how to avenge Xie Huaju and how to beat the Yuan family to pieces. At that time, Xie Huaju was young and energetic, lying on the hospital bed constantly encouraging and persuading his family, shouting together with Xie Jianjun to show off to the Yuan family. The other Xie family members also emotionally agreed. They, who are determined to seek revenge, have no concern for the feelings of the patients around them. Little did she know that Chen Yusi, who was lying on the hospital bed, was very uncomfortable and embarrassed at this moment. She had been holding her urine for a whole night, and shortly after the surgery, she couldn't walk to the bathroom and could only use the bedpan to solve the problem. In this era, the conditions of rural hospitals were very rudimentary and the spring festival was approaching. In order to celebrate with peace of mind, the hospital persuaded patients who could be discharged to go home. Patients who were seriously ill and difficult to treat were transferred to the town hospital, and the remaining patients were concentrated in one ward regardless of gender. Faced with so many unfamiliar men around the hospital bed, how could she, timid and shy, have the courage to drive these people out. I dare not even say that I need to pee. She could only endure it time and time again, then clamp her legs tightly and pray that these men would finish discussing and leave the hospital room as soon as possible. But in the end, she couldn't help but pee on the bed, dirtying the blanket, bedding, and clothes. If adults hear about a little girl wetting the bed, they will mostly laugh it off. Isn't it just bedwetting? Who didn't pee in bed when they were young? Even shit has been stuck in my pants, it's not a big deal. Moreover, in hospitals, bedwetting is even more common. For a teenage girl aged 14 or 15, who is currently in her prime, this is a matter of shame, anger, and death. Seeing her crying uncontrollably, Xia Huaju felt ashamed and apologized to her in fear. After learning about her family's financial difficulties, he also forced his parents to settle her medical and hospitalization expenses. After leaving the hospital, he also worked everywhere, using the money he earned to help her family. In order to obtain a stable income, Xie Huaju disregarded his aunt's ridicule and insults, begged his uncle for many days, and finally obtained a temporary job as a warehouse keeper at the county electronics factory. He also worked as a sand picker at her father's construction site with the help of a junior high school girl named Liao Fang. He didn't pay a penny for the hard dot earned money from two jobs and handed it all over to Chin Yusi's mother. Chapter 5, Love is So Desolate You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. It can be said that in her past life, Xie Huaju shouldered the heavy burden of life for the entire Chin family with her delicate shoulders. It is precisely because of his selfless and desperate efforts that not only Chen Yusi and her younger siblings were able to continue their education, but also the struggling Chen family was able to maintain themselves with dignity. Chen Yusi, who was studying in high school, already had excellent grades. With the support of Xie Huaju, she studied even harder. She wants to repay Xie Huaju's kindness with excellent grades, and also hopes to change her and his destiny by mastering knowledge. Two and a half years later, 
Chen Yusi was successfully admitted to the National Key University Harbin Institute of Technology with the first and third highest scores in the county and province in the college entrance examination. This is still when she estimated her college entrance examination scores and filled out her preferences. The homeroom teacher kindly advised her to be cautious and not to fill out the two universities in the north, in order to ensure that she could be admitted to key universities. Otherwise, with her high scores, she could have gone to a better university. Seeing the brilliant future waiting for these young people who truly love each other, fate played a huge joke on them. When Chen Yusi went to study at Harbin Institute of Technology with her dreams of a young girl and aspirations for the future, her father, who had been without any news for over five years, suddenly returned home. When he returned, he carried the more than 30,000 yuan he had earned from working in Shenzhen in the south for many years. 10,000 yuan was a huge sum of money at that time, and it was even more I dot catching in rural areas. 30,000 yuan was enough to surprise the people around me. Chen's father returned home and was praised and welcomed by his neighbors. People say he has skills and abilities. People have either forgotten or intentionally overlooked this man's years of irresponsibility towards his family, and have even forgotten the contempt and curses they once held towards him in their hearts. Now, people are all honoring him with the title of 10,000 Yuan household and flattering him. Some people shamelessly say that Chen Yusi was able to get into a key university and receive national food solely because of the good fortune of the Chen family. People who used to say that Xie Huajiu was benevolent and righteous also changed their tone. A person with a bit of conscience just says that he is not worthy of Chen Yusi, and those with dark hearts say that they have malicious intentions and take advantage of others' dangers, someone even cursed Xie Huajiu for being cunning, saying that he had long been plotting against the young Chen Yusi. More people say that Xie Huajiu's conversation with Chen Yusi about love is like a toad wanting to eat swan meat. If he has self-awareness, he should take the initiative to leave. Chen's father, who returned home in glory, was naturally even more unwilling to marry his college daughter to Xie Huajiu, a poor boy. He privately approached Xie Huajiu and offered 2,000 yuan, saying, Over the years, you have lent me 1,400 yuan and have also done some farm work for my family. Thank you. I have also calculated the wages, about 300 yuan. Now I will give you 2,000 yuan, which is my gratitude to you. As for my daughter, I have already arranged a partner for her. She is the son of my boss in Shenzhen, with a family fortune of 1 million yuan. I don't say that you, a junior high school graduate, are not worthy of my daughter. I just ask you to leave her and stay away from her. This is beneficial for both your family and mine. If you keep pestering her, I won't be polite to you. After listening to Chen's father's words and looking at his expression, Xie Huajiu silently left without taking the 2,000 yuan. In fact, since Chen Yusi was admitted to a key university, Xie Huajiu has been uneasy and even shares the same idea with her neighbors. He is now vastly different from Chen Yusi, and as a small farmer, he is not worthy of Chen Yusi, the proud son of heaven. The tree of adorable love has already taken root in his heart, can it be said that it can be plucked? What's pulled out are all blood and meat. Although he constantly comforted himself and persuaded himself to accept reality in his heart, he still fell seriously ill. After learning that he was sick, Liao Fang, the female classmate who introduced him to the job of picking sand, disregarded the girl's reserve, suspicion, and rumors, and took the initiative to come to him to persuade, comfort, and pay for his medical treatment. When he recovers from his illness, she also invites him for a walk, a movie, a meal finally, on the evening of her birthday, the two of them indulged in eating and drinking at a hotel in the county town. The next morning when he woke up, he found himself lying in the same bed as her, while she snuggled tightly in his arms, her face as peach blossom. The two of them are not closely related. On the white sheets beneath the two of them, a bright red plum blossom bloomed proudly Liao Fang opened his satisfied yet sleepy eyes and gave him two choices with tenderness and shyness. Either marry her or go to jail. At that time, society had zero tolerance for hooliganism, and even kissing in public could be caught as a criminal. 
Xie Huaju hugged her tightly and said heavily, Mary. The wedding of the two was hasty and grand, and the female family paid for the newlyweds to purchase a wedding house, as well as luxurious appliances and furniture at the time. When Chen Yuxi returned home from winter vacation to find Xie Huaju, Xie Huaju's wife Liao Fang was already more than three months pregnant. She left in tears and returned to college on the same day. It wasn't until her mother passed away three years later that she returned home and stayed for a few days. After the funeral, she never returned. From Xie Huaju's account in his past life, Han Zhangpeng also knew that Chen Yuxi had always been unmarried. She devoted herself wholeheartedly to her studies and work, achieving remarkable results for decades, and later making tremendous contributions to China's aerospace industry. In his past life, Han Zhangpeng also met Xie Huaju's wife Liao Fang multiple times. This woman is shrewd, capable, passionate, and takes care of her husband meticulously. Of course, she also received a sincere and honest response from Xie Huaju. Although their family is not very wealthy, the couple has always been harmonious, which makes many wealthy people envious. Except for playing tricks once when obtaining love, everything else, Liao Fang is impeccable in terms of wife, mother, and interpersonal relationships. Thinking of Chen Yuxi's past life, seeing the thin and sickly face of the girl in front of her, watching her eyes filled with tears, silently and mechanically eating breakfast with only pickled vegetables, Xie Huaju's heart suffocated as if being grabbed by someone. He secretly swore in his heart, I can't let her make a fool of herself. I can't let her continue to be lonely in this life. For almost an instant, he felt that his feelings for her surpassed those of his mother Lu Bing and younger sister Xie Xiaoyan in front of him. This is not surprising, because the mother and younger sister in front of me are only Xie Huaju's mother and younger sister, and have nothing to do with Han Zhangpeng in his previous life. Han Zhangpeng had never seen them in his previous life. He had a familial relationship with them just because he had memories of Xie Huaju in his mind. And in his previous life, Han Zhangpeng knew about Qin Yuxi, and he admired her and sympathized with her. Xie Huaju now inherits all of Han Zhangpeng's memories and emotions, and naturally has an indescribable sense of closeness towards her. Moreover, Chen Yuxi in front of him was about the same size as his daughter from a previous life, and a hint of fatherly love inexplicably surged in his heart. Yu Yu reading www.yuyukangshu.net He just wants to take good care of this poor girl and let her grow up safely. At this moment, the younger sister Xie Xiaoyan naively asked Chen's mother, Aunt Chen, there is no meat or eggs in sister's dishes. Is sister's illness very small? A few people were all stunned. Chen's mother felt a bit embarrassed and didn't know how to say it properly. Xie's mother, Lu Bing, was also a bit embarrassed, so she lightly patted her daughter on the back of the head and pretended to be angry, saying, Do you think they are all as delicious as your older brother? You're all so stubborn. This older sister is sensible, and even if she gets seriously ill and has surgery, she can't bear to eat well. She smiled at Chen's mother and said, Half-grown boy, eat me down. My eldest son, he can eat several bowls of rice in a meal, more than his father. Chen's mother also responded with a smile, It's good if the child can eat. Isn't it because he grew up so tall and so sturdy that he can eat? Lu Bing felt proud in his heart, but he cursed at his son, saying, I'm almost sixteen years old. I didn't go to school after graduating from junior high school last year. If I can't go to school, I know I'm growing taller. I'm almost taller than my father, and I have a lot of strength. I can carry a load of rice weighing 140 to 50 pounds and take off. Upon hearing Xie's mother praise her son, Chen carefully looked at Xie Huaju and smiled, he's not yet sixteen years old. He's really tall. He's not lacking in height and strength, but he will be the backbone of the family in the future. Isn't it because we rural people need strength and good health? There will definitely be many beautiful girls who like him. What's the use of having great strength? I don't know what kind of lover I can find in the future, Lu Bing was very Versailles, and then tentatively said, if I could find a girl like your daughter who is both knowledgeable and filial, 
then our ancestral tomb of the Xie family would be filled with smoke. Upon hearing Lu Bing talk about herself, Chen Yusi couldn't help but shyly turn her head, afraid to touch her gaze. Chapter 6, For Her, Anyone Can Offend Her You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 5 Eating, Xie Huaju was eliminating a large bowl of food and didn't pay attention to his mother Lu Bing's words, nor did he pay attention to her gaze. But when Chen's mother's gaze turned to him and he responded with a kind smile, he noticed the eagerness in her eyes. His heart couldn't help but thump. No, right. Isn't this the mother dot in dot law's gaze at her hairy footed son dot in dot law? I just saw your daughter as my daughter, but you saw me as your son dot in dot law. Isn't this a mess? Chen's mother turned her head to look at Lu Bing with satisfaction and said, Your son is only fifteen years old. He happens to be one year older than my daughter. He is so sensible, tall, and strong. He is really a good young man. Sister-in-law of the Xie family, our Yusi is quick to do things, and we are all leaders inside and outside, and we know it hurts. Mom. Chen Yusi, who had a thin and shy face, couldn't help but shout to stop her from continuing to promote herself so impatiently. Chen's mother could only silence, but still smiled and looked at Xie Huaju, then at Lu Bing. Lu Bing was delighted in his heart and immediately smiled and said, Miss Chen, I can tell that your girl is really good. My Huaju is also a good young man. He can grow vegetables and pigs at home, and farm and harvest outside. He can handle all kinds of farm work. The two middle dot aged women had a great tendency to hit it off. One was attracted to Xie Huaju's tall and strong physique, who was a skilled farm worker. Becoming a son dot in dot law could help her alleviate the burden, a person who admires Chin Yusi's filial piety and intelligence, is an insider in household management, virtuous and capable, and has a prosperous family business. Did they have eye contact like this in their past lives? Seeing the excited expressions of the two middle dot aged women, Xie Huaju believed that Xie Huaju and Chin Yusi in their past lives must have developed a liking for each other due to the matchmaking between their mothers. Otherwise, Xie Huaju from his past life would not be so willing to help the Chin family. He even suspected that Xie Huaju, who had incited his relatives to attack the Yuan family in his past life, might be trying to show his manly spirit in front of Chin Yusi, demonstrating his bravery and fearlessness. As teenagers, impulsiveness and immaturity are innate. But now Xie Huaju just wants to take care of his daughter like he does, to carry his own fatherly love and alleviate his pain of missing his children in the past, without wanting to fall in love with her. He quickly said, Mom, I'm still young, so is she. She still has two and a half years to attend high school. Chen's mother had long wanted her daughter to drop out of school and immediately said, Stop it. It doesn't matter whether a girl finishes high school or not. Lu Bing glared at his son and said, Are you almost 16 years old and still young? When Yu Si finishes high school, two years later, you too will happen to. Obviously hearing Xie Huaju's refusal, Chen Yu Si, who was strong, disregarded her shyness and said to her mother, Mom. I just want to help you with things at home. Don't say that. At this moment, there was a commotion outside the ward, and a large group of men stormed in, interrupting the pleasantries in the ward. Xie Huaju quickly recognized that these people were all relatives and relatives of his own family in this lifetime. Led by Uncle Xie Dingchao and Uncle Xie Jianjun, followed by Grandpa, as well as several uncles, uncles, and cousins, as well as uncles two son dot in dot law and nearby relatives seeing so many men coming in, the other patients and family members in the ward were both surprised and disgusted, but when faced with this group of tall and aggressive men, no one dared to say anything. As soon as Uncle Xie Jianjun entered the door, he proudly shouted, Hua Ju, are you feeling better? Look, uncle, I've brought all my relatives with me. As soon as your father arrives, we'll start discussing. We'll go over early tomorrow morning and we'll definitely be able to beat up the Yuan family of Goori and avenge you. Grandpa remained calm and approached before squeezing out a smile. 
he asked with concern, Hua Ju, are you okay? Xie Hua Ju extended his legs out of the hospital bed, put on his shoes, and said, Grandpa, I have recovered from my illness long ago and am preparing to be discharged. Xie Jianjun was taken aback and exclaimed in shock, No. You can't be discharged. Even if it's okay, you have to lie here for me. Xie Hua Ju looked at him contemptuously and asked, Humph, am I still lying down when I'm good? This is a hospital, how much does it cost to lie down for a day? You pay. His words not only stunned Xie Jianjun, but also others. Mother Lu Bing quickly scolded and said, Hua Ju, how did you talk to your uncle? He is your elder. Humph. Elders. Elders need to look like elders. Xie Hua Ju said angrily, placing his rice bowl heavily on the bedside table. He stood up while putting on his shoes and said, Mom, my illness has already improved. Why do you still lie down? It's so uncomfortable to lie down. Grandpa, uncle, let's go out and talk, don't disturb other patients' rest. As he spoke, he instinctively turned his head to look at the girl Chin Yusi. Sure enough, he saw an anxious and shy expression on her face. Xie Jianjun was anxious and quickly reached out to stop, no way. Absolutely not. You must lie down. Don't worry, we will get the money for your hospitalization from the Yuan family. There's no reason why they won't lose money if they hit someone. Xie Huaju forcefully pushed Xie Jianjun aside and walked out, saying, Yesterday I rolled into the river myself, and it has nothing to do with the Yuan family. You ask them for money, it's blackmail. It's a scammer. You don't want face, I still want face. Xie Huaju had no favorable impression or familial affection toward Xie Jianjun, who was shot for sexually assaulting women in his previous life. Xie Jianjun rushed to Xie Huaju with a few steps and angrily said, You fart. Who wouldn't know that you were beaten into the river by the Yuan family? Xie Huaju pushed Xie Jianjun fiercely and said, Am I not even clearer than you? Did you see me beaten by the Yuan family with your own eyes? With his push, Xie Jianjun stumbled and almost fell. I don't know why, but both Xie Huaju's uncle and father inherited his grandfather's burly body. He is tall and powerful, with a height of around 1.8 meters, making him stand out among the crowd in the local countryside. On the contrary, Xie Jianjun, who has been eating spicy food and doing nothing since childhood, is average in appearance, less than 1.7 meters tall, just like ordinary men around him. Seeing Xie Jianjun almost fall, the others were stunned. They all don't understand why Xie Huaju, who is usually polite to others, treats his elders like this today. Chen's mother, who was watching from the sidelines, also looked at him with a surprised gaze, feeling that she had mistaken someone before. Despite everyone's surprise, Xie Huaju pushed them aside and walked to the door. He turned around and shouted, Grandpa, let's go out. There are patients inside and we need to rest. Xie Jianjun, please don't shout in the hospital room. It's very unethical to disturb patients' rest. Grandpa and his relatives listened and had no choice but to follow out, with a flirtatious expression on their faces and resentment toward Xie Huaju in their hearts. Yu Yu reading www.yuyukangshu.net seeing the expressions on their faces, Xie Huaju couldn't help but sneer repeatedly in his heart. I just don't treat you as family, what's wrong? In his heart, none of the relatives of the Xie family here are as important as the little girl lying in the hospital bed. In order to prevent Chen Yusi from making a fool of herself, she offended the Xie family in front of her, and he didn't care at all. Xie Huaju believes that the reason why Xie Jianjun has come to this day is that he is idle, only knows how to eat, drink, and gamble, and constantly engages in domestic violence against Yuan Xiu, which is closely related to his grandfather and uncle in front of him. Xie Jianjun was shot in his past life, and they have an inescapable responsibility. It was precisely because of their consistent indulgence towards him that he gradually became scumbag. Since that's the case, why do I still respect them? 
Xie Huajiu's repeated provocations, calling him by his name, especially when Xie Jianjun, who had just pushed hard and almost fallen, was completely angered. Xie Huajiu. How did you little brat talk to me? I'm your own uncle. Do you dare to hit me? Do you want to turn the tables on me? Cursing, he turned his head and angrily shouted to the panicked Lu Bing, second sister. In. Law, you don't care about this rebellious son in your family. Lu Bing had a guilty expression on his face, wanting to say something but didn't say anything. He just held his little daughter's hand tightly. Xiao Mei Xia Xiaoyan looked frightened and didn't know what to do. She timidly grabbed her mother's hand and kept hiding behind her. Xia Huaju walked out of the hospital room and sneered loudly, Humph, uncle. He's not worthy of his position. I called him uncle, does he have the face to agree? He's just a few years older than me and wants to put on the stinky airs of an elder in front of me. I'm sorry. His words further infuriated Xie Jianjun. His face turned red and white, and he rushed over angrily, You. You fart. Little bastard, I'm going to kill you today. Chapter 7, Wearing a Hat, You Deserve It. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Xie Huaju turned his head disdainfully and looked at Xie Jianjun, adding fuel to the fire. Do you think I don't know? You just want to push our Xie family and our Xie family relatives into the pit of fire. You want my dad to lead the fight, and you want my grandfather to pay for someone to help with the fight. I'm telling you now, there's no way. Don't say my grandfather doesn't have money, even if he has money, I won't let him pay out. Xie Huajiu's grandfather lives in the county town and has just retired for over a year. He used to be the leader of the factory. Although retirement wages are not high in this era, for rural people, their retirement pension is a huge sum of money, let alone every month. After years of accumulation, it is definitely a huge sum of money. If we can encourage our grandfather to pay, it will undoubtedly be a huge help in summoning outsiders to join the fight. In film and television works, when watching mechanical fights, what one often sees is an immediate trigger. Two groups of people shouting and colliding with each other, one by one desperately beating each other, never giving up. The audience thought that mechanical fights were both spontaneous and sudden, and they also thought that those who participated in the fight would sacrifice themselves and move forward without hesitation. In fact, most mechanical fights are organized and premeditated. Many martial arts organizers are mostly instigated by people, and they are often grilled on the fire, only taking people to the fight as a last resort. The organizers of mechanical fights often have indescribable pains in their hearts. Not only do they charge forward during fights, but they also retreat backwards when retreating. Before and after, they also have to provide money for the people who participate in the fight to eat and drink, otherwise they will be criticized for lacking courage, loyalty, stinginess, and lack of generosity. Once casualties occur, the people who initiate and lead the armed struggle often lose everything and are sentenced to prison. Only fools like Xie Jianjun who use their own small schemes or those who fear that the world will not be chaotic hope for a fight to occur. Xie Jianjun couldn't help but feel angry when his nephew exposed his inner plan and said, Are you forcing your child to be ungrateful? We are avenging you, do you know that? They beat you into the river and even called your grandfather a pig with feet and your grandmother a stinky pig. Have you endured being a grandson? Foot pig and stinky pig are both local slang, referring to the sows of breeding boars and piglets, respectively. Xie Huaju, who was born again, has no feelings for her grandparents. After listening to Xie Jianjun's narration, he didn't feel much anger inside. He sneered and retorted, I told you, I rolled into the river because I accidentally ran by myself, and it has nothing to do with anyone else. And the Yuan family scolded their grandparents because of you, it was you who caused it. It's not you, they won't scold them for no reason. You beat Yuan Xiu time and time again, and they, as fathers, brothers, and brothers, shouldn't they hit you? Who doesn't curse when arguing? 
Do you still want them to praise my grandparents and praise them for educating a good son who dares to beat his wife Xie Jianjun said without hesitation, you fart. Where did I mess with you? It was that stinky woman Yuan Xiu who sent me an X and put an X hat on me. Xie Huaju sneered, do you have any solid evidence? Even if she does, you deserve it. Based on his lifelong memory, he knew that Xie Jianjun was simply catching shadows. The Xie family is a big surname in the local area, unless that man ate leopard bile. Despite Xie Jianjun's trembling anger, Xie Huaju asked, Shuang Chang, you don't work at home. You don't work at home when you harvest late rice. What do you want a woman to do? You are the head of a family, but you just play gambling. Fortunately, my aunt Yuan Xiu, if I were you, I would divorce you his mother and castrate you his mother. Double grabbing is the busiest and most difficult season in local rural areas, not only to harvest mature early rice, but also to plant late rice seedlings. Ignoring the impatient defeat of Xie Jianjun, Xie Huaju looked at his other relatives with a disdainful expression on his face and sneered at them, and you. You relatives are not worthy of being relatives and have no sense of responsibility. As soon as Xie Huaju fired the map cannon, Uncle Xie Dingchao became angry and said, Huaju, are you crazy today? What's wrong with us? You're so uncivilized. If you talk nonsense to me again, I'll teach you a lesson for your father as an uncle. Grandpa also frowned and said, Hua Ju, there are still your uncle's relatives in law here. How can you scold them all? Xie Hua Ju is a reborn person with little family ties to the person in front of him. In addition, Xie Hua Ju himself has a youthful stubbornness, and the anger of his grandfather and uncle has not caused any blood pressure on him. He is not afraid at all. He continued to sneer at the crowd, treating them as passers-by. Seeing his brother and father supporting him, Xie Jianjun, who was originally discouraged, came back and cursed loudly, this rebellious son must have been touched by a ghost today. He is so heartless and unjust, no wonder he couldn't pass a high school entrance exam. Be careful not to be struck to death by lightning one day. Xie Huaju sarcastically said, Humph. Are you still not convinced? I ask you, during the busy farming season, when you saw other men helping Yuan Xiu pick grains, harvest crops, and plant seedlings, did you say no at that time? Why didn't you stop it? Why didn't you go up and help Yuan Xiu? Did you help her with the heavy work in the field? He looked at everyone with disdain and sneered, now that farming is idle and you're bored, let's start saying that she shouldn't do this or that. If any of you could have helped her with farm work at that time, or if you could have forced Xie Jianjun, the lazy guy, to go home and make him do what a housekeeper should do, would Yuan Xiu still ask other men to help her? The uncle angrily asked, you can't stand and talk without hurting your back. His family's affairs should have been done by them. We all have our own family's affairs, how can we have time to help her? Xie Huaju asked in response, Yuan Xiu's father, brother, and younger brother came to reason with the uncle, in order to make Xie Jianjun treat his wife better and let him do more household chores. This is also his family's business. Why do you step out and take care of it now? Uncle is speechless, I don't know what to say for a moment. The young man angrily said, but they hit me. Xie Huaju scolded and asked, did you hit Yuan Xiu? She was taking care of her children at home and doing farm work. Why did she get beaten by you lazy ghost? Xie Jianjun raised his head and said, She's my wife. Did I break the law by beating my wife? If I want to beat her, I'll beat her. Since you fought, you have to take responsibility. Xie Huaju glared at him and said decisively, You caused it, so I can't let you push my dad into the pit of fire. I can't let you incite my grandfather to pay for the fight. Didn't they hit you? You're their son and grandson. If they don't show up, who will show up? You. You little bastard is cowardly. You don't deserve to be the seed of our Xie family. We Xie family don't have such a coward like you either. I'm not a coward. It's none of your business. It's better than you eating, 
drinking, gambling, and being lazy, pushing our Sia family into a fire pit. Fart. Did I push our Sia family into the fire pit? It was their Yuan family who provoked us. You're a coward. You're a coward. I'm a coward. Okay. Then I'll have a fight with you today and see who the coward is. Are you fighting with me? Do you dare to hit your own uncle? You bastard. Dare or not? If you dare, go ahead. Didn't you say I'm sick yet? Can't you even beat a patient? Okay. Okay. I'll slap you on the face for your dad today and teach you how to respect your elders. Speaking, Xie Jianjun rushed forward and slapped Xie Huajiu. Xie Huajiu did not retreat but instead turned up, leaning his body to one side. He grabbed his right hand that had been fanned over with both hands, twisted it violently, and then shouldered it on his shoulder, throwing Xie Jianjun out with a backfall. Dong! Ouch ouch! You little brat, you disobey me! I must kill you! Ouch ouch! Xie Jianjun climbed up and charged toward Xie Huajiu, punching and kicking each other. The families of the patients and doctors who heard the commotion trembled with fear when they saw this behind the scenes. Quickly, Xie Huajiu was beaten with blood by Xie Jianjun, and soon he was knocked down to the ground. Chapter 8 The Plot Was Successful You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. At the beginning, Xie Huajiu was able to fall his uncle Xie Jianjun to the ground completely through surprise attacks. When Xie Jianjun was furious and rushed forward with all his might, he could not defeat him. Although he is stronger than his peers and slightly taller than Xie Jianjun, he choked on water yesterday and his body did not recover. In addition, he stayed up all night last night and was very tired. A 15-year-old child naturally cannot beat this 30-year-old man. Moreover, Xie Huajiu dared not really make a killing move, and dared not use deadly techniques such as teasing the Yin Lok, roaring, and gouging eyes when fighting each other. After all, the opponent is his uncle. It's okay if he loses, but if he wins, it becomes a true rebellion and will be criticized in the future. Of course, the most important reason is that he wants to sell to everyone. He believed that as long as he was beaten badly enough, Xie Jianjun would lose the support of his family. Relatives will begin to sympathize with him when he is young, even if he looks a bit rebellious. In addition, Xie Huajiu believed that Xie Jianjun dared not really make a heavy move. There was a grandfather watching beside him, who loved his grandson very much. Before Grandpa could even take action to protect his short stature, Mother Lu Bing became anxious. Seeing her son bleeding, she cried and rushed forward, pushing Xie Jianjun away and throwing herself onto Xie Huajiu. Don't hit him. Don't hit him. Wu Wu. He's your own nephew. Dad. Are you so stubborn? Can you just bear to watch your grandson be killed by his uncle? Wu Wu. Xiao Mei Xia Xiaoyan tightly grabbed her mother's clothes and cried loudly, Mom. Wow. You guys are bad guys. Big brother ran into the water by himself, not Uncle Yuan. Wow. Everyone was taken aback, their questioning gaze fixed on Xie Jianjun. Xie Jianjun was furious and glared at Xie Xiaoyan, shouting, You're talking nonsense. It was clearly that person surnamed Yuan who drove your brother into the river. No. Xie Xiaoyan shouted loudly, tears streaming down his big eyes. It was big brother who rolled down on his own. Upon hearing her shout, the aura of grandpa, uncle, and others was overwhelming, and the previously righteous expressions disappeared. Uncles-in-laws and son-in-law looked at each other in confusion. Xie Huajiu fell into the river by himself, how could we have any reason to hit someone? Xie Huajiu fell into the river only witnessed by the Yuan family and Xie Huajiu's siblings. Now they all say that it was not the Yuan family who fought, and no matter how much Xie Jianjun emphasized, no one believes him. Children may lie, but they will never take the initiative to tell lies that make them feel wronged. Everyone knows this truth. 
But how did they know that Xie Huajiu was a reborn old man, cunning and cunning, who had already bribed his inexperienced little sister with candy? And Xie Xiaoyan's crying and shouting were not entirely due to what Xie Huajiu taught, but more because she hated Xie Jianjun extremely. No matter what this uncle is saying now, she will go against him at this moment. For Xie Xiaoyan, sometimes he says he rolled into the river, sometimes he says he ran into the river himself, and no one has the heart to investigate. Xie Jianjun saw everyone doubting him and was angry and anxious. He wished he could rush forward and tear Xie Huajiu apart. Xie Huajiu was tightly guarded by his mother Lu Bing, and no matter how angry he was, he could not take action. Seeing Xie Jianjun's angry and helpless expression, Xie Huajiu felt secretly happy. In order to gain more sympathy, Xie Huajiu quietly touched his face with his hand, causing his nose to bleed all over his face. Watching his daughter Dot and Dot Law and granddaughter cry uncontrollably, and seeing their eldest son and other relatives lose their fighting spirit, Grandpa glanced at his youngest son in disappointment, let out a long sigh, waved his hand helplessly, and said with a gloomy expression, Let's go, let's go, let's all go, let's all go, don't fight. Seeing the situation developing as expected, Xie Huajiu was very pleased and proud of his small layout. Together with my younger sister, I denied being thrown into the water by the Yuan family, causing the Xie family to lose their sense of morality in fighting. Without occupying the moral high point of revenge, the momentum of the Xie family will be reduced by half. Similarly, by denying being thrown into the water, Xie Huajiu's father lost his natural qualification as a leader in the fight. If Father Xie is not in charge, Grandpa will not pay. Without a powerful leader, without funds, the momentum of the fight will be further reduced by half. No matter how high Xie Jianjun jumped or shouted, it was meaningless. Who would listen to a scumbag who is lazy, plays cards and gambling, beats his wife and nephews? Seeing his family and friends about to leave, Xie Jianjun became desperate and shouted urgently, Dad! Are we just letting the Yuan family go like this? Grandpa stopped his step and coldly glanced at his anxious little son before looking at his grandson who was slowly getting up. Seeing the hard-to-conceal joy and bloodstains on his grandson's face, he felt very complex in his heart. Although he knew that he, along with other family and relatives, had been teased by this kid, he didn't say anything. Seeing his father's silence, anxious Xie Jianjun turned his gaze to Xie Dingchao, the uncle of Xie Huajiu, and said, Big brother, we can't just break up like this, can we? Do we still have the prestige of the Xie family when we talk about it? Will we not be laughed at by others in the local area in the future? Everyone will say that our Xie family has no seeds. Xie Dingchao avoided his gaze and said dejectedly, jokes. You have long been a joke for our Xie family. You are lazy and play cards and gamble, who doesn't laugh at us? Well, that's good. If you want to laugh, let others laugh at you this time. You don't have a wife, no one has been beaten by you, and no one else wants to see your jokes anymore. He regretted that Xie Jianjun had lost face in front of his in-laws and son dot in dot law, and his speaking attitude naturally did not improve much. Seeing no one supporting him, Xie Jianjun felt heartbroken and glared angrily at Xie Huajiu. Xie Huajiu's heart was filled with joy, how could he care about his gaze? Seeing his angry yet helpless appearance, he was actually very happy. Not going to the fight, except for Xie Jianjun, everyone else breathed a sigh of relief. Especially the uncle's son dot in dot law and in laws exchanged a glance, their eyes filled with contented smiles. They avoided Xie Jianjun's pleading gaze and walked towards the staircase. They didn't want to participate in the fight in their hearts for a long time, but only came to please their in laws and for the sake of a smooth marriage. The bitter meat scheme succeeded but Xie Huajiu did not show too much arrogance. With a glimmer of light in his eyes, he saw his grandfather looking at him and walked over. He politely and calmly said to him, Thank you, Grandpa. You are still wise. Grandpa looked at his grandson and said, Child, it's not Grandpa who is wise, it's you who can distinguish between importance and importance more than adults. 
RCF family really wants to fight for face for your uncle, this bastard. We will lose more face in the future. Are you okay? Xie Huajiu shook his head and said, It's okay, it's all skin injuries. It's okay, it's okay. Grandpa turned around and shouted at Xie Jianjun, who was unwilling to leave. Do you want to leave? You're already thirty years old, and not a teenager understands. Next time I see you hitting your wife again, I'll have to interrupt your hand. What's wrong with beating his wife? Who? Who doesn't beat his wife? Xie Jianjun muttered, limping down the stairs. Seeing Xie Jianjun leave, Lu Bing, the mother, finally felt relieved. She wiped the blood from her son's lips with her sleeve and said with heartache, Huaju, go back, lie down, I'll go call a doctor. Mom, it's okay, it doesn't hurt, Xie Huaju smiled and whispered, I just pretended. As he spoke, he bent down and held Xie Xiaoyan, who was still crying, in his arms. He said, don't cry, little sister, don't cry. Thank you, big brother, today. Our father doesn't need to hit anyone anymore. Wait until big brother buys you candy to eat. Don't cry, okay? Okay. Xie Xiaoyan gently touched the bloodstain on his face and asked with a crying voice, Big brother, do you feel any pain? Uncle is a bad person, and we will never pay attention to him again. Well, if he wants to come to our house, we'll hit him. Xie Huajiu also raised his fist, pinched it tightly, and shook it vigorously. The author is a pink newcomer who fights alone, begging for the support of all the big brothers and beautiful women. Thank you. Chapter 9, Forcing Chen's Mother to Collect Money You are listening at NovelFull.audio Lu Bing looked at him in a daze, not expecting his son to be so generous. Xie Huajiu put Xie Xiaoyan down and whispered again, Mom, go take a look at Chen Yusi on the bed next to us and see if she has gone to the bathroom yet. She has had an operation and cannot leave, so she can only go to bed to solve the problem. Can you help her pull up the screen? I'll go to the bathroom first. The mother looked at her son in surprise and instinctively responded, feeling strange that her son was still concerned about such a small matter at this moment. She looked at her son's back with a little unease for a while, and only then did she leave her daughter into the hospital room after her son finished using the restroom. There is a movable screen in the ward, which can be used by patients to block their gaze in one direction while urinating or changing clothes in bed. Xie Huajiu came out of the toilet and saw Chen Yusi's mother coming over. She carefully held a white bedpan in her hand. Seeing the bedpan, Xie Huajiu felt relieved and said, Chen Yusi didn't make a fool of herself. That's great. Xie Huajiu was very pleased to see Chen's mother, but Chen's mother looked at Xie Huajiu as if she had seen a demon. Her face was filled with fear, her body was also trying to contract, her eyes were timid, her head was hanging low, her feet slowly moved, and she leaned against the wall before slowly moving forward, like a kitten being stared at by a vicious dog. In her heart, Xie Huajiu, who scolded and fought with his elders, was simply an uneducated thug. Just now, how much I liked him in my heart, and now how much I dislike him. Her previous cautious thoughts of recognizing him as her son. In law in exchange for him helping her with farm work have long dissipated. At this moment, she only wants her daughter to stay away from Xie Huajiu, the farther away the better. Seeing her frightened expression, Xie Huajiu knew that the slightest bit of her eye connection with him had already disappeared, and couldn't help but feel amused. Seeing his grandfather walking towards him, he quickened his pace to greet him and asked, Grandpa, what do you want to do with me? Grandpa inserted his right hand into his cotton pants pocket, took out a handful of money, and stuffed it into Xie Huajiu's hand. You can take this money and use it. It was originally intended to be used to entertain the fighters. Now that you're not going to fight, I'll give you this money. Whatever you want to eat, buy more food to supplement your health. Xie Huajiu was worried about not having money, so he took it with peace of mind. Without counting, he stuffed it into his pocket and said, Thank you, Grandpa. When I make money in the future, 
I will definitely show filial piety to you. He spoke politely, but he didn't take it seriously in his heart. I quelled the inevitable armed conflict between the Xia and Yuan families, made great contributions, and saved your Xia family. If it weren't for me, your old man would have lost more than just this little money. Well, good. Grandpa didn't know what his grandson was thinking and said with great satisfaction, come in quickly, it's cold outside. Xia Huajiu said as he escorted his grandfather downstairs, the smell in the ward is too strong. I'll go in later. Grandpa, there's ice on the way, please walk slowly. Grandpa Huai comforted and said, I'm fine. It's so cold outside, don't get cold. Go back. Watching Grandpa leave, Xie Huajiu stood in the corridor, looking outside. After thinking for a moment, he took out the money given by his grandfather from his pocket and counted it a little. It was 60.3 yuan and 70 cents. Seeing a few corner tickets, Xie Huajiu knew that his grandfather had spent all his money on the fight and had taken out all the money that could be taken out of the family. He counted five bills from them, stuffed the rest of the money into his pocket, walked towards the restroom, and waited at the door. In no time, Chen's mother walked out with a clean bedpan in hand. Seeing Xie Huajiu walking towards her, she was so scared that she took two steps back and almost threw away the toilet in her right hand. Xie Huajiu took a step forward, grabbed her empty left hand, stuffed five banknotes into her hand, and said fiercely, this fifty yuan is for me to treat and study for Yusi. If you don't let Yusi study, I'll beat you to death. Do you hear me? Dot. Chen's mother stared blankly, taking the money in fear and numbness. Xie Huajiu angrily said, I'm asking you. Speak up. Chen's mother was so frightened that her whole body trembled. Instinctively, she stuffed the money back into his mouth and panicked, saying, I don't want. I don't want. Fifty yuan is not a small amount, even adults dare not give it freely, let alone Xie Huajiu, who is still a child. Xie Huajiu knew it would be like this, so he deliberately gave her a fierce glare and rudely pushed away her hand, saying, just take it. Don't make me angry and beat you. Humph, I will give you money again in the future, but you can't tell anyone else, have you heard me? Chen's mother's legs were weak with fear, and the hand that took the money was neither extended nor retracted. Her lips kept shaking. Xie Huajiu gave her another push and angrily said, Are you deaf? If you don't say it again, I'll really beat you up. Chen's mother's body stumbled for a moment, and her mouth responded haphazardly, Oh. Oh. In order to strengthen her confidence in letting her daughter study, Xie Huajiu deliberately said in a sarcastic tone, your daughter's grades are so good that she will definitely be able to get into college. Are you afraid that there won't be a good life in the future? She works, and the money she earns in a day is enough for your family to buy meat every day. If you want her to not study, it's not like losing a gold mine. Are you stupid or not? You don't even want good days for the whole family. For the sake of ease in front of you, you can't even bear two and a half years. How could there be such a foolish mother like you in the world? He sternly asked, who told you that a girl with good grades can't even get into college? Do you believe what others say? I tell you, only when Chen Yusi from your family gets into college and makes a living, will your life improve. Do you understand why? After listening to his sarcastic words, Chen's mother thought of the possibility that her daughter might eat national food. She felt both embarrassed and ashamed, saying, I, I. I will let her read, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Xie Huajiu said rudely, don't give me false thanks. If you hope your son and daughter can live a good life in the future, you have to endure for another two and a half years. To be honest, if your daughter gets into college, the university will provide her with subsidies. Not only does your family not need to pay for her education, but she can also send money to her family. Chen Yusi is a sensible child who may become a tutor in college. Tutoring is teaching other people's children to read, and then she can earn money. She is very smart, 
and she can also do other things to earn money in college. If the money is sent back, can you read for your son? I've said so much, do you understand? Don't stare at those few acres of rice fields in your home all day long, you can't see for a long time. Chen's mother hurriedly responded, Oh, oh. I understand. I understand. Xie Huaju deliberately snorted coldly and said discontentedly, Don't go in. He deliberately didn't wash off the blood stains on his face, and after Chen's mother entered, he walked into the ward with a carefree pace. Lying on the hospital bed, he waved his hand to his mother and said, Mom, you guys go back. These damn relatives are all bothering me to death. Mom, I'm going to have preserved meat and stir-fried pickled vegetables for lunch. That thing tastes good. Xie's mother Lu Bing was a bit confused, feeling that Xie Huaju in front of her was speaking too rudely and rudely, not at all like her familiar son. She suppressed the urge to slap him and said in a low, dissatisfied voice, now that the pickled vegetables haven't grown into balls yet, they can't be bought on the street, only pickled vegetable leaves. Chapter 10, Bone Powder Lotus Root Soup You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. That's it. Xie Huaju instructed casually, then you can buy some lake lotus roots in town and go home. After the white lotus roots are fried and cooked, they are crispy and delicious. Otherwise, why not buy two more sections of powdered lotus roots, buy a few cheap bones, and stew a can of powdered lotus root soup. Drinking bone powder lotus root soup is beneficial for restoring the body and is very nourishing. There are two types of lotus roots in rural areas here. A type of lake lotus root called white lotus root has nine holes, and its skin and meat are very tender. It is sweet and crispy when eaten raw, without any residue, and tastes no less than fruit. It also has an excellent cold or stir-fried taste, but when stewed and eaten, its taste is average. Another type of lake lotus root has 11 holes, and the skin and meat have a slightly grayish color. It tastes bad when eaten raw and has residue. But when stewed with bones, the taste is excellent, fragrant and glutinous. So, farmers generally refer to this type of lotus root as powder lotus root. Xie Huaju didn't seem to notice the change in expression on his mother Lu Bing's face, let alone the moment she straightened her right palm and prepared to slap someone. Instead, he turned to look at Chen Yusi and said playfully, Oh, Chen's little girl, you're really beautiful. After saying that, without waiting for other people to respond, he pulled up the quilt and covered his body. Sleep. Sleep. Who makes a loud noise in his mother's name, who's his mother's son of a bitch. The ward was completely silent. Chen Yusi's eyes turned red with embarrassment and anger, and she cursed the hooligans in her heart. Chen's mother seemed foolish, holding five banknotes tightly in her hand, unsure of what to do. Xie's mother Lu Bing raised her palm and saw that her son had covered his whole body with a blanket. She reluctantly put down her palm, but felt embarrassed by her son's generous words and actions. She smiled bitterly at the crowd and apologized in a low voice, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my child is not sensible yet. Please be more responsible and forgive him. Thank you. When his gaze fell on Chen's mother's face, Xie's mother apologetically said, Sister-in-law of the Chen family, I'm sorry. He's really not like this on weekdays. He's both sensible and polite. Today may be, hey. Chen's mother quickly whispered, It's okay, it's okay. Aren't all children like this? I. Before she could finish speaking, Xie Huaju coughed hard a few times, interrupting her words with a clear warning tone in her cough, Chen's mother trembled for a moment, tightly closed her mouth, and looked at Lu Bing in confusion. In her heart, Xie Huaju was simply a demon, completely unrelated to what Lu Bing called being sensible and polite. Lu Bing clearly heard the warning in his son's cough and felt embarrassed again. He also had the idea of beating his son hard again. Thinking of his illness and the beating she had just received, she let out a sigh in her heart, gritted her teeth, and held back tightly. 
She looked apologetically at Chen's mother and nodded apologetically at the shy and angry Chen Yusi, holding her little daughter's hand and carrying a cloth bag containing dishes, as if fleeing from the hospital room. Xia Xiaoyan is too young to understand why her mother is so embarrassed. She only remembered what her elder brother had said about the bone lotus root soup in her heart. She hurriedly walked away with her mother, guessing in her heart, is the bone lotus root soup delicious? My elder brother said he wants it, so it must be delicious. Can I also have a little bit? Not long after Xie's mother Lu Bing and younger sister Xie Xiaoyan went out, Xie Huajiu let out a uniform and subtle snoring sound. He's not pretending to be asleep, he's actually asleep. He originally wanted to recall the communication between Xie Huajiu and him in his past life, hoping to obtain some useful information from it. Although he had talked to Xie Huajiu many times in his past life, Xie Huajiu did not say much about his own family. He mostly talked about things that had a significant impact or were particularly interesting and sad, such as his uncle's affairs, which he intentionally or unintentionally mentioned. In total, there were only about ten things. It shouldn't be difficult to recall now, it just takes some time. But because he didn't sleep all night and had another fight just now, he was very tired and quickly fell asleep. This sleep didn't wake up until noon, and it was still called out by the mother who brought the food. Besides my mother, my father also came. They arrived here in less than a few minutes, and my grandfather also took a bus from the county town to the hospital. Xie Huajiu greeted them and answered their inquiries about his condition. From the conversation between his father and grandfather, he learned that his father rushed home from the reed field overnight without a shuttle bus, relying solely on his legs and walking nearly a hundred miles. When he arrived home in the morning, it was his mother who forced him to have dinner at home before rushing over. There are shuttle buses from the county town to the countryside, but the number of trips is very small, with only two trips to the countryside at noon and dusk. Therefore, my grandfather arrived later than my father. Upon hearing that Xie Huajiu had been knocked unconscious and kicked into the river by the Yuan family, just like before Xie's father returned home, my grandfather was initially filled with righteous indignation and believed that we should retaliate and make the Yuan family pay the price. Surrounded by Xie Huajiu's hospital bed, I heard Xie Huajiu's mother say that Xie Huajiu had a fight with his uncle to prevent a fight, and how he falsely claimed to have rolled into the river with his sister. My grandfather's mentality, like Xie Huajiu's father at this time, slowly changed. They also felt that they couldn't follow Xie Jianjun around aimlessly. The result of aimlessness would be mutual harm, making outsiders laugh at them. If we really want to fight for good or bad, it's still our own people who are unlucky. Even during the Chinese New Year, we can't live peacefully. Thinking of the consequences of the fight, they all shuddered and breathed a sigh of relief for not having a fight. However, my father and grandfather still felt a bit aggrieved in their hearts, filled with hatred towards the Yuan family who had unjustly beaten Xie Huajiu, and cursed the troublemaker Xie Jianjun. Of course, they also preferred the sensible Xie Huajiu, thinking that he is more stable than the adult Xie Jianjun. Xie Huajiu pretended not to know what the elders were thinking and started eating the food brought by his mother. The food was very sumptuous, not only including the stir-fried white lotus root and bone stewed lotus root soup that Xie Huajiu ordered in the morning, but also a plate of chopped chili fried eggs and a plate of braised wild chicken meat. The bone stewed lotus root soup is served in a clay jar, and it is steaming hot. The wild chicken was obviously brought back by my father from the reed field. When Xie Huajiu was eating, Grandpa smiled and stuffed three brand new banknotes into Xie Huajiu's hand. Xie Huajiu shamelessly accepted it and quickly put it into his pocket. He could tell from his grandfather's actions that he brought far more than thirty yuan this time, just because he saw that the fight had not happened, he only gave him this money to buy snacks. When he was still thinking about how to get more money from his grandfather, his father beside him scolded him, little bastard, there's no manners at all. Grandpa gave you so much money, and you just accepted it with such peace of mind. Nowadays, 30 yuan is not a small amount. 
Usually, when rural people visit patients in hospitals, they pay a maximum of 1 yuan and 2 yuan as gifts. Most people just buy a few cents can or fruit. Grandpa is so generous, on the one hand, he really likes this grandson, and on the other hand, he has a retirement salary, so he thinks he should give more. On the other hand, he has prepared a sum of money for the fight, but now that the fight has been stopped, he is willing not to spend 30 yuan for the big money. Xie Huaju didn't take it seriously when his father scolded him, but instead spoke shamelessly, this is my grandfather's generosity and love for my grandson. If I don't take it, won't my grandfather feel cold? There is an ancient saying that goes, the elder gives, dare not resign. Dad, you don't know that, do you? Xie Dingxin listened and couldn't help but laugh or cry. My grandfather couldn't help but burst out laughing and said, Yes, yes, my grandson has the ability, even the ancient saying goes so well. My grandfather gave you money, hoping that you would eat more and some good food. Only when you are strong will you not be bullied in the future. Xie Huaju looked at his father with a deliberately proud expression and said, Dad, take a look. Am I right?